So here's another area where I wander off the reservation. Hey, you big dang dummy, that's no CD. And I was the first guy on the West Coast to use a 600 horse ag cat uh, as a banner tow airplane. A J3 when you're 17 is a lot different airplane when you're 57. Paper drawings, uh, you don't have to. So this is a momentous day uh, at several different levels actually. Number one, I actually have a weekend off. The other thing that's significant uh, is I finally get to go and get the rest of the building material to build this, uh, this table jig. You know, I've been uh, wanting to get this table jig done now for a long time. And so finally I have a chance to go, plus I have a, a whole list of stuff to get. So uh, this is just gonna be a great day. Well, I just spent about eight large at Home Depot. Now, not all of that was for the uh, jig table. I mean, I also got some other stuff. You know, I got a, a grill, a gas grill for the upcoming fly-in and, you know, some stuff like that. But, uh, but that brings up a good point. You know, a lot, of, a lot of people just want to know, when they say, well, how much does it cost to build an airplane? You know, they want to know how much do the nuts and bolts and steel tubing and aluminum and all that, built fabric and all that, how much does that cost, okay? And, and that's a, a legitimate question. So I think we're going to have two categories of, uh, of cost totals. You know, we'll have the overall total cost. You know, I'll have all the, the cost of buying materials to, to make jigs and all that stuff. And the cost of buying materials to actually build the airplane with. Uh, the cost of, of uh, the stuff that's not going to end up on the airplane, we'll call that administrative costs, all right? And then the, uh, you know, the nuts and bolts and tubing and all that, those will be direct costs, you know? So we'll, we'll call them that. We'll call them direct, direct costs. But like I said, even, even all that, you know, you could really get dive deep into the weeds if you wanted to um, you know you can say well what about the hangar rent if I didn't have this project or airplanes I wouldn't have to have the hangar so you need to apply the hangar rent well you know I'm just not going to go to that depth but uh, um, so I will um, uh, keep track of all the costs um, you know administrative wise and, and direct materials cost for the airplane uh, and, and right after this uh, jig table build we'll go ahead and, and total everything up this far so uh, so that's where we're at so far need to get my material and all this stuff back to the hangar and uh, get building that table well this is my progress so far okay I've got the basic frame uh, put together now I need to flip it over and put the uh, the tabletops on so the way I I make uh, you know these jig tables basically I use two by sixes for the frame I use four by fours for the legs and uh, it's pretty obvious that I like cross bracing all right I cross brace everything um, and here's your first tip of the day uh, where the cross braces go I always put a shim the same size as the leg in between the leg and what it's going to attach to. All right, so uh, in that way, the, 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 the material that I use is the same material that I'm going to use for the cross bracing. So uh, like where there's a four by four, uh, it gets cross braced two di different directions. I use a, a shim, one of these uh, in, on a, the, the two sides it'll get cross braced. And uh, this is the width of a two by six and it, this width right here is the same width as the four by four, okay? It's a one by four, or actually they call it a five quarter by, by four. Uh, actually pretty nicely milled uh, piece. Anyway, one by fours has cross braces. And uh, the table is gonna be 20 feet long. And so the, the, the first, I, I lay down two two by sixes and the ends are 19 feet apart. And I'll get to why they're not 20 feet apart uh, in a follow up. And then I put a center 2x6 down, full length, and I just let them overlap, kind of like a splice. 
and uh, and then that's where cross pieces go and more legs and these uh, basically what I did is I just pre-cut uh, all my my shims and uh, and all the cross braces and uh, that way you know I, I marked one out fit it and then use this as a template to lay all the rest of them out and then just as fast as I could saw them out you know um, I had all my cross braces and the shims made that way very little touch labor time involved so it didn't really take that much time at all to uh, build this table the biggest challenge is the junk wood that is available uh, to us now in the stores I mean you know I cherry-picked the pile for a long time picked out the best stuff I could get and it's still just uh, it's a challenge to make it end up being straight and uh, not twisted or warped or whatever else so I'm gonna spend a lot of time with uh, uh, tongue depressors and paint stir sticks leveling this table up afterwards but that's okay I mean that's how you level them up and I know I, I know going into that that that's what I'm gonna have to do and the other tip of the day if you're an old guy like me is I build tables pretty pretty high all right my workbench uh, you know comes up to about here on me you know a lot of people like building these low workbenches and all stuff man I get it up here where I'm gonna work and I realized that I'm gonna have uh, that tri-pacer fuselage on here and it'll be, you know, a little bit more of a challenge to reach the top lawn draws. Hey, I got a ladder, all right? But I don't wanna be bending over, working on stuff long enough to build a, a Super Cub fuselage, all right? Uh, at my age, I don't straighten up as quick as I, as I used to. So anyway, here we are at this point. Now I gotta flip this over and put the tabletops on. And I'll give you some tips uh, when I start putting the tabletops on as well. So here's another tip. Uh, you're going to want to have a line going end to end on your uh, tabletop. And uh, so you know, use it as a reference and all that. Well, rather than build the whole table and then try to lay out the line by string to string and trying to draw next to the string, put a, a line down the middle of all your boards now, you know, while you can still get to everything. Uh, you know, you start at each end. You can put, you can put reference lines where everything should be and then uh, run your lines down with your drywall or T-square and uh, get, all, get all your boards uh, lined out like that and then put all your boards down, line up that line and fasten them to the framework. That's the way I do it. And uh, in the past when I've done that, when I put a string from one end to the other, the string just basically cuts the line in half all the way down. So it, it uh, works really well. You can use all the straight edges and tape measures and squares and whatever else you want to uh, you know lay out your reference line down the middle of your table but the acid test that's going to be running a line down from end to end so I put this plumb bob string at the at the very beginning just straight on top of the line and I run the line to the other end and see how we did and uh, the line just basically almost the, the plumb bob line almost covers up the black line all the way down so uh, I'm happy well so here's the efforts you know for the to this up to this point so with just a little bit of shimming here and there uh, this table will be good to go it's uh, it's straight arrow straight and remarkably flat so uh, just a little bit of adjustment and we should be good to go so that's how I uh, initially build a jig table. Thanks for watching.